Um, so I just wanted to start off the interview by asking you to tell me a little bit about your journey as a photographer. Makes me feel a little bit old, um, okay. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but I'll try to answer uh, the best of my ability. Um, so I I studied obviously I studied light uh, studied uh, this specialization the uh, travel um, art and uh, uh, photojournalism. um uh, was that was a specialization i did and uh, uh what had happened was at light in life um before joining light in life i had this like this vague idea that i'd like to pursue a career as a photographer but uh, light in life gave a very good grounding for me um uh, in terms of technicalities um which i i think i still have not met anyone or come across another institute which is which gives that, that good a solid uh, you know uh, background or like you know base understanding of how uh, things work so even when technology works and technology changes and stuff i think uh, still that uh, iqbal sir's classes on lighting like it it holds true i mean it's timeless like it really applies to all kinds of uh, to all um, era i think um so but uh, my interest from the beginning was also i think I, because i was writing for newspapers and stuff um, when i was in college also um i was more interested in photojournalism mm. so i um uh, so first i started out actually uh, because light and life was also expensive i had to uh, pay off my loan and everything um after my course so i uh, worked as a photo editor uh photo editor in the sense it's not not in the traditional sense of um editing something in photoshop uh i was working as a photo editor for a time warner company uh it was called america online and uh, there i curated content so if you have an article or whatever like then i will decide what picture to go with it um and uh, you know sort of uh, 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 analyze the quality of the pictures and see what's best to be used where those sort of things so that kind of that was the uh, that gave me a good uh, those two years uh, gave me a good understanding of how the international media industry works uh, you know so and uh, new media was an emergent thing at that time uh, internet wasn't as popular as it is now and i mean this web interfaces was not as popular uh, but aol and all was one of the pioneers who brought that thing in the us first and um also that gave a good um platform for me to work with um, international uh, teams and uh, you know talents and all that so uh, so at one hand you got like i got a good um uh, understanding and foundation in the technicalities of photography from light and life and then i got this real world um uh, experience from two years of working um at this organization as well um and also it gives you a good idea of uh, you know the visual culture um that is uh, prominent uh, within this international media spaces uh because everything i mean the, the photography also for photographs have a language right like it has a visual language and is very important for us uh, being from the global south to be able to speak to the international audience so uh, that kind of um, understanding i got from that those two years as well then after two years i start uh, decided to freelance which is always my plan um, to freelance uh, i was also um, i also qualified for a fellowship uh, with a small uh, fellowship to uh, participate in a a workshop which is meant for um, emerging 30 emerging photographers under 30 um in asia uh, so so once i went there and i got a a, a better an uh, entry point you you can say that uh, to the world of photojournalism specifically uh so so you we are kind of taught by all these industry uh big wigs and uh you get to interact with uh international photo editors so that gave me a good uh, thing and gave me enough confidence to start uh to plunge into freelance um as well so um uh, at that point um 
also like i i, I think um I, this two years i while i was working there i also kept photographing all all the time um i i was i had never stopped shooting at all so i was still doing my own stories um i would work every weekend i would go and shoot um during the weekends and stuff so by the time i was ready to quit my job and start freelancing totally i i had a portfolio ready um then it was uh, then i had just i i had no no contacts no networks no nothing so um i just wrote to editors uh, you know like you, i went to this bookstore looked at all the magazines which i wished i could work for you know and i liked and uh, you'll find the editors uh, emails in those so i found i just wrote to the email uh, email addresses and i asked can i come and meet you uh, i want to show you my portfolio so so they said some uh, some did not answer at all uh, some of them said yes i went i showed my portfolio uh, and then yeah and then i worked for them for the next 10 years <laughs> it was um so uh, so that in in a in a sense that i was also lucky that um i started working with lonely planet magazine particularly at the time when they were just launching so i quit my job in 2010 and they had just launched the magazine and they were looking for photographers as well so the timing was really good you know so i i got my foot in the door when they were looking for photographers and and the um i think the way uh, 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 a lot of time what happens is when a regular when an average photographer applies to a lot of these magazines and stuff uh they have a specific um uh, focus area say because they'll be shooting maybe street photography and stuff but they may not be very good with la- landscape they may not be very good with food they may not be good with architecture and everything so that was a great advantage that i had having uh, studied at light in life i had this uh, grounding in all these subjects although i didn't specialize in you know say architecture or anything in the ba- basic uh, photography program that we had we had um we had like i said like a good foundation so to speak so uh, for a travel magazine especially you can't just be a you know food photographer or you can't just be a street photographer you have to be a jack of all trades you know you can be there might be one area that you're really fond of but your um your average should be way above the general average you know you have to be able to come out with really good architecture food uh, you know even wildlife whatever so uh, so in that sense like i was uh, although i was the only girl in their uh, uh, woman in their photography team for like almost a decade um, actually yeah i think um, there was uh, it, it was it was purely because like i was able to deliver no like because they they are spending money and they are sending you to all these places and so they need somebody who's versatile you can't be like you know i shoot only this or that so that way like it really worked out and um, i worked uh, that that's what i did for like the next decade i just worked in really like i mean i really slogged <laughs> for because also um, the field is very very competitive um so i used to work for uh, lonely planet outlook traveler national uh, nat geo traveler then um, uh, outlook magazine open magazine new indian Ex- uh, indian express not the new indian express the delhi indian express um then forbes fortune so all of this like for, it was almost like i mean i'd be like um any story that has to be done in south india especially or bangalore especially it has to come to me like you know i was like that competitive i was i was very very focused also um so so i i did that uh, but what happens after a while is also that um when you're running so fast uh, at some point you will kind of realize that you're not really looking at the bigger picture uh, because in terms of what i wanted to do and uh, you you don't have have the time to do uh, personal personal projects or like you know longer term projects because um if you just go from assignment to assignment 
uh, you're not really giving yourself um, space to grow. You know, you're limited by what the magazine is envisioning, you know, so whoever you're working with. Mm, and and I did get to work with some really good photo editors, um, but they are also limited, like they can't mentor you uh, and, you know, help you reach your full potential or anything because they are, they are very, very, like they are working in tight deadlines. They have, uh, they have a lot in, on their plate already. So they will push you to the, within, uh, uh, you know, within the confines of time, like that they have to spare. So they will push you to do your best in that assignment or you know in, in whatever objectives the magazine has uh, but it's not really pushing you to your full potential so uh, what i felt was i was missing out on time and energy that could be spent on my long term projects and my personal growth that wasn't happening as much uh, but the good thing was that i had by then i had traveled like uh, at least 20 plus countries i had um, I learned to dive. I, I was doing underwater photography. I had learned to surf. I, I mean, there was rock climbing. So, uh, so I, I had I got this opportunity to do a lot of stuff. Um, meet a lot of very interesting people just because of photography. You know, I had that opportunity which I think otherwise I would not have had. Uh, so that way, that was good, and and that kind of. Uh, change my worldview also uh you know um I, I i i always say this that like i mean i don't know how much of photography can change people but photography can definitely change you the photographer will definitely be changed you can't be the same person you know before you yep. start photography and after so um so that then like i also wanted to have a voice of my own um, also, what happens is, in especially when you're working with international media, uh, a lot of these magazines and newspapers, they uh, you're essentially only illustrating their story of your country, of your people, of you know. Yeah. So that way, I'm very, very um, uh, jingoistic, you could say. <laughs> um, I, I, I want. Um, I mean, I, I don't agree with a lot of Western narratives that is said about. Um, so I felt um, photography in that sense is limited um, in this in this space that it exists, um, whether now, even if it is in websites or magazines, print, medium and everything, you can't you don't have um, enough context. And you um, if you are telling a story of somebody, the picture can't speak beyond a point. Right. The, the it's the writer who writes, the, uh, you know text or uh, and the editor will weave it into a story and things like that and also space for photo essays is very limited um, in both in national and international space so um, so that way I kind of felt limited and then I uh, also also the industry was also transitioning where you video was taking precedence so um, again I applied for another fellowship and um, I got admitted to a, a world, I got a, a grant from uh, World Press Photo and Conrad Adenauer Foundation to study um, multimedia journalism uh, with the university in Philippines, uh, Ateneo de Manila, that's the name of the university. So I studied uh, that, that um, I studied multimedia journalism there. And then I started doing videos, like right? started doing documentary films. So within documentary films, I felt like I had more voice uh, for myself and also for my subjects who I was filming. So I could tell. So now I have the ability to tell the stories that I care about and which I think is important to our society. And also I have I can give that space for uh, people who I am covering or whose stories I have to tell. They can they have the freedom to tell their own stories. Right. So, so that, that way I feel like there is more thing. Um, now photography, I do very, uh, uh, I'm very picky about what I do. I, I just, uh, I do like, um, if it's a global campaign with UNESCO for green in Asia, like I, I did. So like that I do, uh, for New York times, I shoot, uh, now and then 
but I don't do the mad hatter stuff that I <laughs> once used to. That's just not sustainable. Um, yeah, so I'm focusing more on long term projects now. Uh, so how is photojournalism changed, and how do you see it changing in the future as well? I I don't have a full answer to it, uh, mm-hmm. but my observation is that uh, before you um, you had your portfolio, whatever, and then you go and uh, you know you convince the editors that you are uh, skillful enough and you are able to deliver the uh, story. That was good enough. And the challenge was uh, to convince them that you're more than a photographer. That that's also there. Like in all these newsrooms, uh, I I I I mean, for lack of a better word, I think that um, photographers are actually considered somehow intellectually inferior. It's 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 a it's like a is this like tug and war fight? Like you know, they think that you can't write. I mean, because you're if you're a photographer, you can't really write or you know, uh, that was sort of the mentality and um, editorial decisions purely rested with the writers um, and who would eventually become. Like you would say if you have a, a story is made by a photographer and a writer, right? Uh, but the majority of the uh, research and writing the, of the story and everything is done by the writer. Very little creative power is vested with photographers except for making those visuals so then eventually if you look at the career trajectory of staff photographers and writers also you you could become the chief photographer of a um, organization uh, of a magazine or newspaper but you would never be uh, you you'll become a photo editor you'll become the national photo editor and all that but you're never going to be the chief editor of the of the newspaper right it's always a writer who will be that um but uh, so that so that was the conflict point before, you know, because you had to always work very hard to to convince them that um, you have the storytelling skills, you can tell the story, you can write it also, you can present it in a very good way. Um, now, I think from that, it's like moved a lot because uh, um, the idea of a photographer existing in a vacuum and a writer existing in a vacuum is gone. Everybody has to be everyone now. Everyone has to be able to write. Everyone has to be able to take a picture. So um, a lot of, if you see, when the transition happened also, there was a uh, dip in the quality of uh, photography because a lot of people, what they did was they cost, did cost cutting. They cut out the photographer from the uh, equation and asked the writers to take the pictures. You know, and the pictures were so bad, and the uh, why and uh, and it happened vice versa also, where they in some magazines where it's more visually heavy, they would uh, hire the photographer and ask them to write. Um, you know, so there also it will take a, you know, a dip in the quality. You know, because of the writing may not be as good. So, uh, so that way that problem was more or less resolved by itself you know just because of the um, ways the world worked and the uh, economic uh, situation was such uh, and especially with websites and you know new media like if everything is online you have to be really nimble really fast so everybody had to do everything um so that worked uh, well but now uh, i think uh, there is like this social media is the biggest game changer of everything i think um I, I feel it's like it's a good thing also and it's a bad thing also like in one way you can have uh, hundreds of thousands of followers and an audience i mean essentially followers are your audience right so that way you have that opportunity if you're willing to put in that work and that effort and all that into social media however fickle it is it is still worth putting in that effort um I don't know if the effort is worth the returns, but yeah, but that possibility is there that you could have that. Uh, so in that way, photography has become uh, more democratic now. Uh, but on the other hand, it also promotes a lot of uh, mediocre work um, and it becomes more self-indulgent um, and a lot of, you know, so that also happens. 
uh and then for people i mean luckily i just kind of escaped the social media <laughs> the same because i'm not i'm not a social media person i i don't put in too much effort into uh, social media and all that uh but it seems uh, so for me now it it's not it doesn't affect me as much but i still do feel that people their first instinct is to look at your you know followers and then gauge how you know good you are at your work or or you're not and and that i think is very uh sad uh yeah. because then you lose out on a lot of this thing but that said that's still the lay person uh good photo editors and organizations they do their research they're not carried away by instagram feeds uh they look at what you've actually done and then hire you so that's the good part uh but i i feel that they also feel the pressure a lot you know because um because as the industry moves towards merging uh marketing with actual editorial content editorial teams also have to uh cater to marketing teams needs and marketing teams likes people with like hundreds of thousands of followers uh so there again you are kind of compromising the you know people who likes to take selfies as opposed to people who actually does work so yeah so i think it's like a double edged sword um as of now i, I it, it doesn't affect me as much um i don't know how for how long it lasts but in my experience i feel um you can i mean as long as you do good work uh, you know people can't ignore that like you, your work will speak for yourself so then you know you will always uh, get um you lo- you you won't be like in a situation where you don't get work so that will be there but i don't know for people who are just starting i feel like people who are just starting and they don't they have don't have established relationships with you know media organizations and they don't know the people don't know about them i feel like it's um, it's quite unfair that they get judged based on you know social media nonsense so, but that's the reality of it can you tell me about some stories that you like to talk about so uh, when i um, started pitching stories of my own uh, and all that i was looking from the perspective of a person who wants to work with international media organizations and i started out looking at stories wondering is this something that uh, the editor would be interested in or you know is this something that's interesting to international uh, audiences etc so uh, so it would be uh, it would be about sport or it could be about women empowerment uh because that's that's also the like the common narrative that was that is uh, still going on right like like basically that indian women needed saving um and uh, but even then i al- also always had um, had a solutions focus like i was always interested in how um okay we have a problem but i also wanted to see what people were doing about it and i thought like that there wasn't enough being said about it you know about the solutions uh so so that was always there but um the uh, after a little while i kind of uh, gave this uh, um thought to the things that was happening immediately around me so uh, like for example the water you drink uh, right i mean and um, um uh my my husband would would say like you know jo you're like you're a journalist like you know if you if you don't people like you don't say these stories then who is going to say it? right so um so i started thinking like that um and um, and this uh, uh, filmmaking documentary filmmaking or photography or whatever stories became a excuse for me to sit and research about subjects which i already like anyway you know so i wanted to find out like what's happening to the water that's hap- you know around us we went to delhi i couldn't even breathe and i'm like oh, why is the air like this so then i did a story on air pollution um then uh, in the nilgiris human elef- animal conflict yeah. was really going bad um and uh, my mother's village is also there uh, near uti in a place called godalur um so 
so then uh then i want to tell that story right so then it became very very personal like everything is like every story that i do is something that i care about and i want to do something about and uh, i'm not an activist i'm not a scientist but i'm a storyteller and this is my way of giving back right like doing something about it you know so um so that then also from a uh, wondering or second guessing what editors might like uh in the international scene it went to thinking about how can i get them interested in the story that i care about so uh then i figured i mean i tried to devise ways and like in saying that like you know they should they should i i uh, my uh, mission was to get them interested in the story said i wanted to tell um yeah and uh, yeah i've been lucky that it worked out so far uh yeah so, um also i want to say this like if when i when i was starting out also um my major one problem was that i didn't care about too many things um and i lamented about it because you know because there be like photographers who have dedicated their life to uh, some cause and and i'll be like you know i really don't care it doesn't interest me uh you know and and if someone's reading this and like you know things that they need to have some cause and they need to really care about something and all and if they're not like i'll really tell them to like please relax it's okay <laughs> it's okay to not you know uh have some it will all those things will come with you growing as a person um i feel and and you can also see like now that i'm much older and i have a lot of gray hair in my head um you can also tell you know when people are just faking and you know that they don't they're not really invested in that subject or issue or anything you can tell that they're faking it so my recommendation would be to not fake it at all uh be honest about whatever work you do you know if you're doing a story just so that you can sell the story and get published that's totally fine as long as you're doing a good job of fact checking you know doing going about uh ethical methods all of that if you're doing it correctly it's totally fine you don't have to fake concern and you know all that just to you know just because you think that will make you more appealing don't do that um those things will come naturally later and for all you know you know you might end up caring about what happens to your cats or you might care about fashion or whatever it is um but i think that's it's important to be authentic about what uh, you know you're going to invest your life in can you tell us a little more about your experience at lighten life academy that um i i i think it there's no replacing i mean you can um i i have friends who just purely like they're self made and they've learned from online sources and things like that um but i think a focused course for one or two years is like it saves you a lot of uh, time which is very valuable so so can you tell me a little bit about what that experience has been like as a woman um, photographer um so uh, from the time when i started uh, there were like you could count all women photographers photojournalists uh, in one hand from india i mean like you know so uh, there weren't many uh, now there are like way there's just quite a lot of uh, women photographers and uh, there's lot of opportunities also to help them around um uh, uh which I, a lot of my male friends complain about because they say like you know you uh, the girls are getting all the opportunities now um but i think it's much needed also um and a lot of it is directed towards uh, people under 25 under 30 you know like uh, so there is a lot of international focus especially to give opportunities to uh, women from the global south uh so this is a good time for anyone who wants to get into photojournalism or you know photography generally it's a very very good time um in terms of um uh, gender equality parity all of that uh, it's it's the same as any other uh, profession i think you know you come across the same kind of discriminations and you know underestimations all of those things uh, happen 
but in my experience what has happened is uh, that is only the initial phase you know when you are like knocking at some door and uh, you know like this uh, indian editor would come and like you know judge based on how you look and you know you they think that you you're not uh, capable of some work um i have had those experiences also where they don't even look at my portfolio and they just decide i can't do a job uh, i have experience where i've been sent to a uh, for a, a, a assignment in bhutan and they thought they hired me thinking that i'm a ma- i'm a guy i mean this was a foreign magazine uh even then you know and then when i showed up they were like oh you're a girl <laughs> like yeah <laughs> um i've had a well known famous photographer in bangalore uh asked me whether i actually whether i really did take some shot which i had shot for a magazine uh and i, I mean yeah so i mean there'd be like lots of um, you know situations like that but um but once you get that like i mean the people who really count who actually hires you they only care about delivery can you do the job or not and if you can do the job you will you will never be without work uh that is my experience irrespective of gender um at lonely planet i used to be sent for all extreme adventure uh, sports uh, all extreme things i used to cover i was the only girl but all the other boys don't didn't like this uh, extreme adventure thing so uh, you know that actually gave me an edge i mean lonely planet didn't care whether i was a girl or a boy or anything uh, in fact for them it was an advantage because then they had to do only one room booking uh, because a writer would be like a girl uh, mostly they are like a lot of the writers were girls so they could just like you know save money on that also and um, yeah i'd be sent to do surfing and jump from a plane and uh, go diving with sharks all of that i did so so yeah so once it's the initial thing uh, but beyond that i think um, what we all need to work on mostly is uh, our own inhibitions because before anybody else tells us you can't do something we've already told ourselves that we can't do something so and also i think we are also very uh, unfair in the sense that we want equality in everything and then we also expect somebody else to lift our suitcase um so i think those kind of uh course corrections you have to do in your head first you know um i i find a lot of lot of girls like they complain about uh, misogyny and this that and and then they also expect freebies and you know special considerations and all of that if you go internationally as an as a photographer for a um magazine or organization you're not going to be treated any differently from any other person <laughs> uh you are considered as a uh a person a photographer who's competent to complete the job so you have to be that uh you know you have to like forget you are an indian woman and this and that and all of that you have to keep at home and then just do the job uh so i think that is what um, we have to work on mostly and just focus on being the best you can at the job uh and uh, yeah forget that you are a girl yourself then you work on other things with other people you know so yeah so that is my advice as well 